Thanks for tuning in to Topanga Sessions. I'm your host, Nick. I'm here with Million. How you doing? I'm great. How are you doing, Nick? I'm doing well. Now, the Me Too movement has been a thing that has been very powerful and very strong, and yet there is still rampant uh, abuse going on, and this is something that you've dealt with from a very young age. Yes, actually. When I was younger, I was actually molested. Um, I'm not, so sorry that you had to deal with that. that it's it's okay. It's it's shaped me who I am. It's helped shape me uh, to be the person I am today. And also, I've realized eight, if not nine out of ten girls, I feel, have been somewhat molested sexually when they were younger. Um, whether they want to admit it or, you know, talk about it. But based off conversations I have with other girlfriends and friends and um, in general, um, not just females, actually. Some, some males I've spoke to, too, have been, you know. Oh, well, to be honest with you, um, something I don't share very often is, yeah, I've been taken advantage of as well when I was much younger. I'm sorry to hear that. So, um, something I can relate to very well. Right. So I feel like it, it happens a lot. And um, it's sad because I feel like our childhood shapes it's a big part of who, it shapes who we are, you know, as we're You are adults. a sponge at that point. Right. And it's not just uh, strangers that you have to be worried about, which is so sad and disgusting to even say, but also family. Yeah, it's the family friends. It's it's not like the, a random man walks up, you know, that does happen. But I feel like a lot of it is family or family friends that um, people that we should be trusting that happens to these kids. So... Yeah, that happened to me when I was younger, you know, um, thankfully not like intercourse wise, but like just in, inappropriately touched. And, and um, uh, I was sharing with you earlier that uh, about 10 years ago, I um, had a head injury, um, which had me in the ICU for five days. I was bleeding in my head. That is and so wild. It was, but it was actually a blessing in disguise because a lot of my memories of my younger days of molestation and all that have been pretty much washed away. That is... When, when, and when I used to have nightmares wow. about it. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, that stuff just haunts you. And right. You were just given... Isn't it crazy how some things that we think are absolutely tragedies are things that are really there to just help you? Yeah, it turn, yeah, it works out for the good, for sure. So I'm blessed that, I guess, in that, in that way, that head injury, you know, um, washed away those bad memories in that way. Wow. I mean, what happened? For the head injury? Yeah. Oh, um, well, I was drugged by a quote-unquote friend. This was when I was out in Holy Hollywood. Holy shit. Yeah, I was chasing my dreams, as we'll get into, you know, being a female and being in the industry. You got to definitely be careful who you surround yourself with. But I was hanging out one night with a, a group of friends, and this was January 2012. And ironically, I was supposed to live with these, it was these three other guys. We we're going to be like a super group, kind of like a Black Eyed Peas vibe. One guy's a producer, another one's a singer, another one's a DJ, and I was like And it said they were just predators. I guess so, because I thought they were friends. One night we we're just, you know, smoking, chilling. I told one of the guys I had a headache and he gives me a pill. He told me it was like this herbal pill for my headache. And I was about um, and I took it. And about 15 minutes later, it felt like a, a hammer was hitting my head. Like it, it was a pain I've never felt. And I just saw myself at a young age riding a tricycle with my parents pushing me. So I thought I was going to die because they say your life flashes before your eyes. So I was like, oh, my gosh, like I saw myself as a little kid and I was over the toilet. And I asked God to please help me, save me. You know, like I remember crying out. Oh and my God. I'm thankful I wasn't, you know, raped or anything from the guy, but I remember it laying there and I couldn't talk. And his roommate walks out the next morning and she's like, bye guys. And I was trying to tell her, help me, but I couldn't even talk. Like she, she probably thought I was just sleepy laying there, but I couldn't even move. And oh my that God. night I actually drove home. I finally got some vision in my eyes because I started losing vision. And um, not eating for three days, my roommate finally takes me to the emergency room, and they told me I was bleeding in my head. And if I would have slept one more night, I could have died in my sleep. Holy it, was, it was pretty intense. It was pretty intense. So for someone that's always on the go, on the go, whether it's at the studio, the gym, or just you know, I'm a I'm a people person. So just going out and networking, the I had basically had to be a couch potato for they said six to nine months because it's it's not a elbow injury or finger injury it's your head right so kind of important it's important you need to chill but I want to share a real a uh, like quick testimony of, of how it brought my faith in um 
in God and believing that someone is watching over me because I was scared of the dark. And I remember uh, it was like the third day in ICU. I felt a presence there and I didn't, I thought it was a nurse at first. I was like, hello. And it was, and there was no one there, but it was a, a presence of like peace, like peace. The, the room was pitch black. It was, if anybody knows hospitals in Burbank, they don't play about their rooms and they're trying to save on electricity, but you know, um, it was pitch black and I felt like a presence there, but I was able to sleep peacefully and um, I remember I didn't have insurance then, so it was about uh, 90, uh, 85 grand for my ICU stay. Right. Whew. I didn't have insurance. That was the main part of me not going to the hospital in the first place and just trying to drink Gatorade and sleep Which it off. Which is so sad that that's such a thing that right. you have to like... Let me you, just try to do it. And, yeah, no. Because like, you don't have insurance in. Right. Oh. So 80, and then so, you know, I was in the hospital and then they gave you about a week, two weeks to relax and I had to move from Hollywood because I moved out to Hollywood. I'm from Orange County. I moved back to Orange County with my family and then bills started coming. That's when 70 grand, 80 grand. So it was about 80 grand, right? January 2012 so about two weeks later I had in the middle of the night um my head was burning hot it was hot it was like I, I was like stressed out and my mom's like I don't care if you have a uh, medic uh, insurance or whatever we're gonna go to the hospital so we go to the ER and they told me I had inflammation in my head like a lot of neurons I was stressed out so a lot of too much commotion was going on in my head so they just gave me medicine and sent me home and once again about a week later five grand for that hospital visit five six grand for that night a uh, couple hours in the ER and then two weeks later I had an anxiety my first anxiety attack you ever had an anxiety attack they are what you might call debilitating for you oh yeah yeah so it was my first time having anxiety attack I've never had it but it's like and it's scary as hell it's because so scary especially you, if you don't know what's going on exactly for those who don't know it's like when you feel like you you're, should you inhale or should you exhale is your is your heart beating fast or is it beating slow it's kind of like it's so true. you're in the air you're kind of like like you know so I went into the ER and they told me I had an um, uh, anxiety attack and I remember the nurse telling me like sweetie you're not supposed to be even stressing you're not supposed to be thinking your head is like it's a big injury and I was like I can't pay the bills like I was so stressed about the money she was like you shouldn't be worried about it here's like here go to the front and they should be able to help you out like talk to them about like a payment plan so I go to the front they, t they type in my info mind you I don't have insurance so I they get my ID they're typing in there's like all right you're good you're you, sh you should be covered and I'm like what do you mean I'm covering they're like here call this number tomorrow morning because it was like four in the morning call this tomorrow call this number tomorrow morning and they should be able to help you out next like, you know, the ER, so many people, they're like not yeah. even trying to talk. And I'm like, so I'm kind of in disbelief, like what's going on? So the next morning I had all my bills laid out and I called the number and I still remember it was this like lady with a Southern accent and she was like, well, it says here you're you're over 21. I'm I'm trying to do what I want. Like, oh, well, I mean, if you need me to jump in, because yeah, honey, like I'm actually from the uh, mountains of Tennessee. Okay, but she was black. So can okay. you do like a Southern black uh, I, I don't know if I have that one. <laughs> I don't even I can, know. I can do a valley girl really well, okay, and well. I can do a gay valley boy really well. Okay, well, it was a southern black lady. I don't know if I could do all that well either. Maybe I won't do it in the accent, but she was basically saying, okay, you're over 21, your parents don't have insurance, and hmm, she was even in disbelief. She's like, can you hold on for one second, sweetie? I was like, yeah, sure. So she comes back on. She said, it says here, March 2012, and anything prior is covered. What? And I was like, well, I don't have insurance. She was like, all those bills should have 800-888 numbers, sweetie. Go ahead and give them a call, and um, your your bills should be covered. She's like, well, honey, if we can't explain it, that's God. Holy. So I almost shit. dropped the phone. So I called all those numbers on the bills, and not one bill was ever sent back to me. All the numbers was, the 100 grand was cleared. Since then, I started really me meditating, praying. I, I want to take a moment on that. <laughs> that's... I mean, right. That's so all three wild. of my hospital visits. It wasn't just the first one. She said March 2012. So the first one was when I got drug was in January, and mind you, it was getting into February after all my visits. So, okay, I really. I, before we go, uh, jump down a little further. Uh, do you know what drug they gave you? So it was a lace pill, like a lace Molly pill that he admits later that he got at a sex convention in Vegas. You are fucking kidding me. So it was me. laced with a whole bunch of different Do things. Do you feel like you might want to uh, say this person's name out loud? No, it's okay. fine. I'm not going to put them on. No, it's it, like I said, it happened years ago. And I had two different ways. I could have even, like, you know, called the cops or I had other friends that wanted to handle it streetwise. But Understood. I said, you know what? Let God do his thing. And um, I think one of his biggest loss was losing me as a friend. <laughs> that is such a powerful, strong way to handle that. Right. Yeah. I mean, 
first off, thank you so much for like talking about this. And uh, I mean, for the uh, for the person beyond the lens that has dealt with stuff like this, what do you have to say about Whew. how to either like start to understand it or what they you can do to uh, like start talking to people about it and getting it to a point that you can actually like take your power back? Right. Um, first off. Um, don't put the guilt on yourself. That is for sure. Right. Don't put the guilt on yourself. I think a lot of people try to replay the situation. And, and you know, obviously um, we're imperfect people and we probably put ourselves in situations sometimes that we probably shouldn't have. Right. Oh, I have. Uh, <laughs> by the way, I've been um, drugged twice and wow. with uh, roofies. Wow. And, uh, Were luck- these friends? No, 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 no. I was, I was out and about, and you just really have to like watch your drink, even from the bartender, yes. which is something that's really creepy to have to even think about. Right. But one thing that I'm very grateful for with that is um, I don't, you can't just shuffle me along. Right. I just pass out right there. I was actually at the Abbey uh, in West Hollywood, and I can easily drink like, more than a few drinks and Mm -hmm. I had two Mm -hmm. and uh, next day I wake up I'm on my couch my friend uh, had left a note and said you're fine you're safe but like you just totally fell down on the thing so uh, when I say I can relate to what you're dealing with that's the important part too of having a a friend or good friend by you because you just don't know what what and just being really wary of and careful of your surroundings and feel good friends are not friends Mm. That's uh, something that, because they do not actually have your back. Mm. Say that again. Feel good friends. Feel good friends are not actual friends. What about friends that are positive? Like, so what do you mean? Elaborate more on feel good friends. What I mean are the people that are there just to hang out, just to have fun, party. Yeah, like they don't really care if you're having a bad day. They just want to like use you to have fun. Right. They're not the type of friend you can call at two a.m. Like, hey, you're going through some issues. Maybe to go get a drink. Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. I totally or to understand. use you for like what you bring to the table right. or anything like that. So right. this is real deal. Right. Uh, it's fine. We're out in the. It's uh, a beautiful day. And we're Marina Del Rey. Right. And we just rhymed. Planes and, planes and boats everywhere. Okay. Now you are Asian, yes. and we are dealing with some people that feel justified hurting other Asian people and you've been dealing with this as well yeah um you know it's the whole hashtag stop Asian hate which I I actually don't like using because I feel like there's power in the tongue and what we speak so I actually say hashtag show Asians love instead of stop Asian hate because I feel like it's a more positive and it's so simple to do that but yet people just jump on bandwagons right So um, I was actually jumped and picked on when I was um, younger in elementary school. I was called like, even though I'm Vietnamese, they call me the Chinese girl or like China, China, Macarena. They would say like a whole bunch of, you know, Chinese jokes and tell me to go back to my country. That's so fucked up. Right. As a kid. So imagine, you know, as a kid and you're you just want to you want to make friends with people, but they don't want to be your friend because of your skin or your eyes are too chinky and then they'll put their eyes back. So, um. It, it, it was growing up I had to definitely experience um, I experienced racism at a young age so with everything going on now like it's it's not only is it I'm glad that it's being shown and people are, are talking about it we're talking about it but it's been something that's been going on for a minute now like in the Asian community you know I feel like we're not really represented well even in the entertainment industry you know what I mean like um, that's very fair it's I feel like we're there's not much opportunity and I don't know if it's all due to racism. I don't think it is, but I just feel like more doors need to be open for the for people in the Asian community. I definitely. I mean, the thing that blows my mind is this like what we don't realize is uh, even those children that were picking on you, that's that's learned. The racism is learned. Right. And we always think that we should uh, like just hate the people that hate and there's no way to actually fix the problem that way because it just keeps on destroying us more and more because if you allow hate in your heart even if it's Mm. a just cause which the sad part is most people think that they're 
their hate is just. You, right. you just told me a story that I want you to share with our viewers that uh, about the man who lost his money and he was he felt just in doing what he did. Yeah, I just saw a video that this guy invested like hundreds of thousands of dollars. I mean, he lost his investment, so he felt mad. So he went to um, got in his car and there was a group of people just walking the crosswalk old people younger young kids just walking family just walking a crosswalk and he zooms right into them and drives off and you in the video it's it's pretty graphic um bodies are flying and like 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 arms are flying off hit like it was it was kind of crazy five people i think believe died on the scene and then like a couple people died later on but it's just because he was having a quote unquote bad day or you know especially the the whole shooter at the spa uh, that happened a couple months ago of, uh, in Atlanta he was supposedly the shooter was having a bad day and he went to shoot up uh, the spa that killed uh, I believe nine lives and I mean to obviously this is terrible but I, I want people to start realizing that we're living in a world that we are somehow being taught that uh, if we feel justified in what we do, we can do it. Mm. And there's something that is systematically wrong with uh, culture right now. We have to find a way to be like, you have to open your arms. I mean, You can't cast out darkness with darkness. You gotta have, bring light. So for our viewer, for someone who has been, had to deal with maybe even just half or one thing that you've dealt with and you're such a powerful strong person that's here today what do you have to say to them that to give them some sort of potential light at the end of the tunnel you know uh, my, my motto is stay dope have hope that's my motto is my hashtag hashtag stay dope have hope I, mean, I feel so, like I'm gonna go right here with that one Stay dope, have hope. Yeah, so dope is you. It's not, my hashtag isn't be dope, it's stay dope. So dope is you. If dope is to you is wearing glasses and you're a four-eyed kid in fourth grade, that's dope. Like, you stay dope. You know, dope to you is you want to be a, a rapper or a musician. You're the only one in your family that wants to be a musician. Like, and, but that's you. So stay dope. And the other half is, or you want to go to school, you want to do, you want to start your own business and you know, whatever dope is to you, stay dope. But have hope is the other part is like, there's brighter days. That's what the other part is. Like have hope, like never give up on yourself, give up on life, give up on other people, have hope in a situation, you know? Um, so that's the motto of life. So if anybody watching out there and you've been through, whether it's molestation, whether you've been drugged, whether you're you're going on this journey of chasing your dreams, I think the motto of staying dope and having hope is just stay dope, have hope is like embrace that. Embrace the journey. Embrace who you are. Be you. Stay dope and have hope and know that there are brighter days and this too shall pass. Can I give you a hug? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you are such a ray of light in this world and I like I was talking to you beforehand about how uh, I told you about the things that I've dealt with in my life and how I believe that I went through these things that to really help people and even talk to you today and uh, show light and realize that there are other lenses that you can see what you're going through in a better way yeah so i have to say from one shining light to another well played for sure thank you so much for the opportunity and you, like you said you were sharing some of the stuff you've been through and it's amazing what you're doing giving artists platforms to to get deeper than just the music and the shows you know people see on my instagram i'm doing shows i'm because i dj as well so i'm djing and i'm rapping and I'm doing this but i think i don't think a lot of people actually know what it took to get to where i'm at and the things i've had to kind of endure that's that's made me who i am today that is so beyond true i mean for you especially but that's everyone the thing right. is uh for you at home like we we are all more than what is presented on the surface level and if you really take the time if you actually care and want to take the time you'll find some amazing stories that might inspire you to move forward with what you're doing or even have a moment of peace with the stress and anxiety that you deal with right yes and music is a great um is a great not just avenue but like a vessel, you know, like it's a great way for me to to talk to people and share my story through my music. And you are doing such a great job. <laughs> so speaking of, what song are you going to be 
So this next song is actually called, um, I changed the name already. It it was um, first called Why They Hatin', but like I said, the power word. So it's called So Amazing, but the the last three letters is A-Z-N, capitalized. So amazing. There it is. Well, thank you so much. And I really hope this inspired you to uh, move forward and maybe uh, talk to someone and uh, let them know how you're really feeling and uh, find that person you can actually trust. Stay dope, have hope. Thanks for tuning in. Think that they hate gon' be stopping my people We started peaceful, they feel with evil It's getting lethal Kicking and smacking and spitting and grabbing Swinging and stabbing as cameras flashing Ask me what happened We need some action Fuck the relaxing, fuck the sit back and be passive That's past tense We gave them chances, we need some answers Demand it Usually cool, right now I feel like they play us as fools Bully our people at work and at school Laugh at our language cause they can't speak too Thou son that die without big thing yet. My son that die, my home big shit. Ninja get mad, jen out on my. Don't go one, wung, yai. Juki my noi jing. Juki my kim jing. Don't jump, người go thou. Bow. Why they hate On the Asian. I can't take it. Uh uh. Heart is breaking. Why they hate On the Asian. So amazing, uh huh, we so amazing. Why they hate it? On the Asians. I can't take it, uh uh, heart is breaking. Why they hate it? On the Asians. So amazing, uh huh, we so amazing. Shout out to all my Asian people. Stay dope, have hope. <laughs>